What's up everybody? David here, and on today's episode of Firecast, we're gonna be covering Firebase authentication. And just as a reminder to you, this is one of many episodes in a series on Firebase and the web, where we cover things like the real-time database, Firebase authentication, Firebase hosting, Firebase storage, pretty much Firebase everything for the web. And we also cover JavaScript frameworks, so Angular, Ember, React, Polymer, you know, all that good stuff. So if you wanna see those episodes, make sure to hit the subscribe button. But today we're covering Firebase authentication. We're gonna go over how to get everything set up in the Firebase console. And then after that, we're gonna build a little app that uses email and password authentication. So let's get going. So when you're working with Firebase authentication in the JavaScript SDK, you're gonna be working within this auth namespace, which returns to you all the auth methods you need to log users in. And today we're gonna to be focusing on email and password. So to log a user in with email and password, we can call auth.signin with email and password. And as you might have guessed, it takes in an email as well as a password. And what this will do is it'll sign in an existing user and return to you a promise where you can resolve that user. But let's say you don't have a user and you want to create an account. Well, to do that, you can create user with email and password that takes an email and a password. And I think you're starting to see a bit of a pattern here. And so what this will do is it will go and create the user and it will also log them in. So just like before with sign in with email and password, they both return promises which allow you to asynchronously resolve the user's data. But since it's a promise, it will only resolve one time. So if you want to monitor authentication state, you can use a different method for this. And that method is on auth state changed, which takes in a callback. And this callback fires off every single time the authentication state changes. So whether a user logs in or a user logs out, that will trigger this callback function. So in the case that a user logs in, this Firebase user parameter will be populated with the current user's information. But if the user logs out, this Firebase user parameter will be null. So these are the main three methods you need to know for working with email and password authentication. But to practice them, let's go and build a login and signup form. So here I have a web app with a couple HTML elements. We have a email text box, a password text box, a login button, a sign up button, and a not seen log out button because no one's logged in, so we shouldn't really present them the log out button. And all of these elements are correspond over here in our HTML. The email text box, the password text box, our login button, sign up button, and unseen logout button. And then down here is my application code stored in my app.js file. And if you're wondering where I'm including the Firebase SDK, it's up here in the header. So I have some pretty sweet web fonts and then also the 3.1 version of Firebase JS. And yes, of course, my own homebrewed styles right here. So now let's kick this app off by opening up the app.js file. So default inside of app.js, I have configured my Firebase application. So I have all my configuration keys and then I just call firebase.initialize app. And you can find all this information in the Firebase console. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna get all of these elements that I referenced before into the DOM. So I'm going to get all these elements with the magic of editing, which you can see is just everything we referenced before. Email, password, login, sign up, and log out. So now that I have all the DOM elements, I want to first attach a click event to this login button where I gather the email and the password fields and then send them off to Firebase Authentication to log in a user. So let's add a little comment for that. And now I'll grab the button, so btn login, add event listener, click, and then provide the callback function. So inside of this callback function, I want to get my email and password fields. So we'll grab the txt email.value and the password.value. And I'm also going to store Firebase auth into this little variable since I don't have a lot of real estate. And then now I'm going to sign in with sign in with email and password. 
And sign in with email and password returns to me a promise, which allows me to resolve the user, or I can use this promise to catch any errors that might happen and log them to the console. So essentially what's gonna happen here is I'm going to provide an email and a password, click this login button, and this will fire off the add event listener function. And then inside of here, we'll gather email and password, send them off to Firebase Authentication, and then if there's a user, it'll log them in. If not, we will catch that error and log it to the console. And I see that I actually have a little typo right here, so I want to switch that from password to pass. So now I'm gonna go and log in a user, so david at mysupercoolemails.com with my super secret password. And when I log in, you can see we actually get an error. And this error says that the given sign-in provider is disabled for this Firebase project. Enable it in the Firebase console. So let's go over to the Firebase console to see what this is all about. So here in the Firebase console, I'm in the authentication tab. And underneath here, I'm going to click on sign-in method. And you can see within sign-in method that we have this table of all of the sign-in providers. So email and password, the one we're using, Google, Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, and my personal favorite, Anonymous. And what you might notice is, is that under status, all of these are disabled. And what this means is, is that we can't use them. So to enable them, we can go over here and click this pencil and then enable. So now I'm gonna go and refresh this page and I'm gonna try another one, david at whateveremails.com. And when I log in, we get another error. And this error says that there is no user record corresponding to this account, which makes sense because we don't have any users. So how are we supposed to log anyone in? So let's fix that by attaching event to the sign up button. So back in our app, I'm going to add a click event for the sign up button. So btn sign up dot add event listener click with a callback function. And then now inside of this callback function, I'm gonna do something really similar to what's going on inside of login. Because essentially all we're doing here is we're getting the email, the password, and then we're calling sign in with email and password and checking for any errors. And we can really do the same thing inside of here, but rather than call sign in with email and password, we can just call create user with email and password. So let's just copy and paste all of this code and then now change sign in to create user. So one thing you might be wondering is, is how do we know that this value right here is an actual email? Well, we don't. And on the client, that is up to us to validate that because Firebase authentication just assumes the input you send to it is an email or whatever that you want to pass back to it. And it's lenient and leaves that up to you. So like a good developer we are, we're just going to leave a little to-do note. Check for real email. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm going to log in with a very real email and with my password. And then when I click sign up, nothing happens. And we don't see anything because while we are checking for errors, we are not actually resolving the user. So in this promise, I could use the dot then method to resolve the user and then log them to the console. But this promise will only fire off one time, which leaves me in the dark for any authentication state changes. So rather than using dot then, I wanna use a real-time authentication listener. So using firebase.auth.onauth state changed, I can pass through a callback function, and this will let me know every single time the authentication state changes. So this Firebase user parameter could contain a populated Firebase user, or it could be null if we're not logged in. So inside of here, I'm going to write an if statement to check for the user. So if the user exists, let's log them to the console. Otherwise, let's log a little message of not logged in. So now when I refresh the page, you can see that we have the user logged to the console. So I can go and open up this user, and if I scroll down, you can see that the same email is the one we use to create the user. So now we've given the users the ability to log in and sign up. But when they're logged in, we'd like to show them a logout button so they can click that and log out. 
You can see down here in our HTML, I have this button of BTN logout. And by default, we have this hide class on it, which sets its display to none. So I'm going to go back to my app.js and add a click event to be able to log out when that button is clicked. So I'm going to tap into it with BTN logout, add event listener click with this callback function. Now inside of this callback function, I'm going to call firebase.auth.signout. And this will sign out the currently authenticated user. So now my logout button will work when it's clicked on, but we can't see it. So what we could do is, is inside of this on auth state change listener, we can check to see if we want to display the button if the user is logged in. So if the user is logged in, we're going to get into the class list of BTN logout, and we're going to remove the hidden class. And if they are not logged in, we want to add that. So now when we refresh the page, we can see that we have our nice logged out button and that we are logged in. And if I go and click the logged out button, you can see down in the console, we log the message of not logged in, which means we logged out. So that's pretty much everything you need to know to get started with Firebase authentication. And if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And also, if you want to learn more about Firebase authentication, like using Twitter, Facebook, Google, GitHub off, then you can check out our documentation, which the links are in the description. But before I head out, I want to see what you all are using for Firebase authentication. Like, what provider do you want to use and what kind of apps are you building? And that's all, but I'll see you guys next time.